Hey guys, welcome to the Rowdy Boys. Today we will be talking about email marketing, more specifically email marketing copywriting. By the way, Devin Zander, Clayton Johnson, welcome to the fucking show. All right, this might be one of the worst episodes of Rowdy Boys ever because we're a little bit in a rush. If you can tell by how fast I'm talking, uh, no, it's not at 1.5 speed. I'm just really fast. But um, we've, I don't know, this, busy this day. This is the best episode of Rowdy best Boys day. ever. Best day ever. Busy day. clayton has got to leave soon, but we need to do a fucking episode because we do not let our five fans down. Am I right? <laughs> High five. Yeah. Let's High five go. for the five fans. <laughs> yeah, baby. Including James. James. <laughs> I hope you're still out there. But um, <laughs> yesterday, well, actually, there's big news. Clayton has joined Scup as our chief operating officer. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and one of the first meetings he attended was our marketing meeting yesterday. And within that, I was kind of like tearing down uh, some of the emails that our team has written. They, they weren't bad, but one thing that we need to understand about copywriting for emails is that all emails are not made equal. And what I mean by that is like uh, essentially one of our copywriters had asked, well, but we do these kinds of emails and they work really well. Should we stop doing those? And they were more story driven emails. And I said, no, we shouldn't stop, but you need to understand that those are essentially to sell people on booking a call. And on our book a call sales page, you know, there's not a lot of information. It's really just a form where you enter your contact info and you book a call to talk with our team and then we sell a $6,000 offer. Uh, but the emails in question that we were reviewing and that I was saying needed to change were story-driven emails that were for a webinar. Two entirely different things, all right? What works for one and I like this because it actually plays into what we were doing with ad engage and stuff and modalities and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like what works for one thing, just because it works for that, doesn't mean it's going to work for an entirely different type of sell or different type of offer. I feel like I've been talking this whole time and now I need to shut up so you can talk. No, this is good, but dude. Um, I mean, the, this, is a, this is a cool topic because look, every, every type of email that you do, it, it has, a different, um, has a different goal. Right. And so maybe we can break down the different types of emails that you might send as a brand and what would be your recommendation for each type. So oh, yeah. like right now, you just started talking about webinar emails. Yes. And actually, what's kind of cool is that um, when you're doing a webinar launch sequence, you have a sequence where you're trying to get people to sign up. And then you also have a sequence where you're trying to get people to attend the webinar. Yep. So can you kind of walk through how you think about what are the types of emails and how do you write the ones that are trying to get people to uh, actually sign up? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me open up a notepad and I'm on my phone so I can write down, make sure I don't, I'm, I'm, guys, I'm so stupid. I have ADHD. Okay, well, I don't even know how to open I'll tell you, I'll, I'll ask you. Okay, I'll well, do it. Well, we'll, we'll go through them. You'll, yeah, yeah. you'll lead me through. How, okay. would you, how would you think about writing emails to get people to sign up for a webinar? Okay. What are the main things that people need to So. I, I actually, this is funny because I feel like you explained it better earlier when we were on our walk <laughs> and when we were walking. Uh, yeah, when we were walking on our walk, guys, sorry, we're fucking scatterbrained. But <laughs> uh, the thing you have to understand about selling people on signing up for a webinar is you're typically sending them to a registration page, right? Now, there's two scenarios here. It's entirely possible that you're sending people to a blank Zoom or a blank go-to webinar page. I've seen that. And I still wouldn't really let it affect the strategy a whole lot. And then you've got, you know, the, where you're sending them to a registration page where it's got all the info, it's got all the bullet points, all that, all that different good stuff. So the way you're going to want to write those is on just focusing on selling the click. You're not actually selling anything here. Like there's nothing for people to buy. That's what the webinar is for. So the whole goal of the email is to let the webinar do its job. You're not trying to sell people in your emails. All you're trying to do is sell them on clicking the link, which will take them to the registration page. The registration page will sell them on signing up, and then the webinar sells them on the product. What's up, Mom Chill? We are recapping everything we went over on the marketing meeting <laughs> yesterday, just so you know. Man, when I, when I think about this, I'm like, what is the mode that someone's in that they're, they, they're curious enough to get on the webinar? And... Um, you know the the training, the training that they're going to be signing up for. You, you got to position it in a yes. way where they're like, "Well, what is this? I'm I'm very curious. I really want I want to sign up for this because I'm I I don't like I know enough about what it is to be interested, 
but there's so much curiosity. Like you either have results that yeah. I've, I haven't seen before, or it's a new methodology that you're going to reveal. And wait, how are these guys doing it? Yeah, that, yeah. That's kind of the frame that I feel like I want people to have is like, dude, how is that possible? I have to get on this to understand it. That Yeah. It, it, dude, it really depends on like your audience, right? Yeah. So true. with what we discussed yesterday, it, the way we do it that way is because we're like a biz op audience, right? Like a lot of our customers have not necessarily found success yet and they're looking for a new way to do things, right? So you, right. you get them like curiosity driven. Oh, there's new, there's easier, right? It's, it's, it's really just all based around novelty and then also alleviating pain. So if there's some sort of pain that they're currently feeling in, in, in the current business, right? So let me just give you an example. If I were to sell someone on uh, a different way of doing Amazon, sorry, yeah. and it didn't require a lot of upfront inventory, I would drill in the pain of how most FBA requires like ridiculous amounts of upfront inventory and all these huge yeah. costs and stuff like that. So that's like another way to do it outside of like mechanisms and curiosity and stuff is just like a better way to do things that really gets rid of this pain that you have. But Dude, do you think that's the most powerful sentiment that someone has in the biz op space? Is it getting away from oh the yeah. pain? For, for biz op, definitely. It's it's getting away from whatever their life is now. And it's not just biz op, but it's it's a lot of those, like, I don't, I don't know what you'd call them, but, you know, weight loss, right? You're trying a lot. Well, I guess it's different. It, I guess it depends on how you write your ads. Uh, mm -hmm. Because with weight loss, maybe people are, are just going towards something, right? Like... Uh, well, it, 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 it could totally depend. It could from, be anything. I mean, I, some I people struggle with weight so much that they have like a, an event coming up. Let's say it's like a wedding, a wedding. or like something like that. Yeah, the wedding for and me. And they're like, it's like I, the beach. Yeah, yeah. Or man, I'll tell you, like for me, what happened was that I saw pictures of myself at a we at a wedding. You know, like the pictures came back from the wedding, and that, and I Ooh. saw the double chin, and I was like, yucky yuck. That's when I was like, yo, I have to take action now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I think. Maybe men, men and women are though, different. I don't know. That, I, I agree with that. I, I do think men and women are different when it comes to things like weight loss, at least. Yeah. But when, when you come to a biz op offer, I, I really do think it's all away from. It, it's hardly ever that people just want to be excelling at life. It's more so like there's a pain that's so strong. Yeah. They're trying to get away from it, whether it's poverty or like their family and friends not believing them. Girlfriend. Or the job that they hate. The job that they hate, exactly. Yeah. Trying to get away from it. Or just the life that they hate, the routine that they hate, right? So would you consider, so okay, for each email, um, would you consider talking about that one pain and kind of driving into that or kind of having a, a, a few different angles? Because you could say like, yeah. this is away from your pain, um, but you can also make money and it's also easy. You try to hit on all those different things in one email or you try to have like one core... So I think that the emails should all have, if, if it's a webinar registration email, right, that we're talking yeah. about, like, yeah, exactly. I think they should all have one core idea, right? Yeah. But I also, like, I want to have bullet points in my webinar emails. I do, which okay. give, like, ideas of what's what's going to happen. But the way I'll structure that is you have the your hook, which is, like, introducing the big idea of this email, right? It's, it could be, like, oh, do your products suck and not sell? So then the idea of the email, oh, keep reading or something like that, right? Then the idea of the email is like a better way to do products, right? And then the next few lines might talk about that a little bit as well as uh, scarcity, join link, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then I basically have bullet points that are just, uh, you'll also be learning okay. this. So the intro right? of the email and the hook, you'll present the core idea and the yeah. message, and then you'll introduce the link, and then you'll have bullet points. And the bullet points can actually cover a few different things in addition that they will learn. Yeah. But I they actually so. might have been hooked just by the intro. You know, you can have a, the yeah. intro and then the link and hook them just with that. And then the bullets will be for the people that continue to read and they exactly. want a little more. And then, yeah. and then when you write your campaign, obviously, you're not just sending one registration email. Yeah. You kind of test out different. Actually, this is, this is a key point. I think some people do send one registration email. Uh, you guys promote every day up until the... Know. Well, you can ask Momchil. He's here. Do you know how many registration emails you wrote for the, the sequence? Is it 10? Okay. And that's just for people who... For who are not registered. Yeah. And then we had like another seven for people who did register. Okay. So 17 registration emails leading up to the webinar in total. <laughs> 10 for people who have 
not yet signed up, and then seven for people who have signed up, which is, uh, we'll talk about that next, I assume, which is selling them on yeah. actually showing up. To the yeah. Okay, so let, just to kind of clarify, can you break down what would the structure be of, of a great uh, registration email okay. as an example? Guys, we're dropping all the knowledge. Are you ready? Patricia, are you ready? Sorry, we have a ton, hey, we have a ton Patty, of people in the office today. <laughs> it's my wife. She said, heck yeah. Um, so uh, very simple. You have a... Uh, Subject, subject line, line which is just curiosity driven, like okay. trying to get them to open. It could also be like hook. I mean, the subject line is honestly less important uh, in my opinion than most people think because my goal as a direct response, response brand isn't to like get as many opens as possible. Because if I wanted to do that, I would just send subject lines that are like, he did what? Question mark, right? Or like, sorry. Biggest, I got like a 95% open rate on a 50,000 person email because I just said, sorry, dot, dot, dot is the subject line. Dude, that's sick. Right. I, I like know. that. Yeah. You but should, you, why not use those? I mean, you can. Yeah. Uh, but really what I, I, I don't. Maybe not every time. Yeah. It, that, that's, you can't do those a lot. It's clickbait. Clickbait's very bad for engagement because if you do clickbait excessively, then your engagement goes down significantly over time. Okay. But uh, it, it's just like something probably related to the hook or, right. or the over all idea of the promo itself promos yeah. themselves need to have their own angle that's actually pretty important when it comes to a webinar like our whole big idea of the entire promo is that you can use fortune 500 brands to make uh passive income it's not really passive income we actually say to fuel your pod business but yeah. um yeah so that's like your your subject line is either related to the big idea of the promotion the big idea of the email and you go very curiosity or um, mechanism driven, which is also curiosity driven, where yeah. you're trying to veil kind of the idea of what's inside mm -hmm. and then you hook them right away. Because when you use curiosity to get people to open something, you do not have very long to get their attention. You, you need to grab that attention like instantly. So that first line of the email where most people are saying, Hey, first name, what's up, first name, yo, first name, right? Really, what you want to do is have a very strong hook right there. And you can include the first name in it, too. I see a lot of, actually, I think it's like Scott Oldford or something, some random uh, guy that maybe maybe a lot of the viewers know. I think I saw him do that. He, I don't know, he uses first name throughout emails very well. And I always thought it was very engaging. Oh, I like that, it. yeah. I, I knew, yeah as a marketer, I know they're putting that in there, but... I would like to do more customization. The yeah. more I can, like personalization, I, personalization. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that a lot. And I bet it's good for sending lots of emails too. Cause we know it's good for SMS, for yeah. example. Yeah. Well, and, and then with the hook, right? It really, again, I'm kind of like going towards pain type things. Like, okay. do you have something that's not working, right? Or are you tired of something that's not working? Or would you like to see how you can finally fix this? Right, the whole goal of the hook is to get them to keep reading. So, yeah. what or is identify the with that? I mean, hopefully, you're yeah. hitting on a pain point that people are like, "Oh shit, this is me." Exactly. You yeah, know? and and that will be like, exactly, and that's almost personalization in itself, right? Yeah. Because you're identifying their issue so on such a personal level. Man, we got to make sure we don't go over uh, on such a personal level that they do feel that it's them and they feel like it's a personal email to them, right? How do you think about that hook? Like what are some examples of personal away from pain that people in the biz ops space are? are yeah. We kind of mentioned a couple, but what do you think is like the more powerful one? So I can really only speak from like the e-commerce niche. It would yeah. be, I would just be guessing if I spoke about other ones. Um, but, or I guess I could even spoke about like ones that worked on me too. Yeah. But mine are, mine would be like, sick of having customers that just buy once and never come back right because i'm obsessed with the uh, and that's that's poorly written okay don't yeah, yeah. don't take no, that i'm, I'm right. asking for that, ideas that, that's the yeah. idea though is something like that because me as a business owner i'm always worried I, I understand that the best way to maximize our profit is to have higher customer lifetime value right so then the enemy of that would be customers that buy once and never come back so like low brand engagement um or products aren't good, something like that, right? And a uh, hook around that and how my brand could solve that would be outstanding. Or for e-commerce stuff, like the big ones, I mean, anyone who's operating in the e-commerce niche can probably name them, it's not hard. It's just like bad products, bad ads, print on demand specifically, it's having to come up with like designs and stuff like that, or uh, 
getting banned from like Facebook. That's massive one for e-commerce. Like, uh, that's actually a good idea. I've got to write that sometime. I, I I've done that before, but just to give you an example, so we're doing the Amazon promo right now, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't require Facebook ads at all. So we could use a. F uh, a hook about like, look, if you have issues with Facebook ads, either they're too expensive or you keep getting banned, read this email because I'm going to show you how you can forget about Facebook and still make, yeah. you know, X amount on your store. Yeah, right? I like that. So yeah. that's like a good example. But so it's like identifying the core pain yeah. issue. That's like the best way to hook people in BizOp because it's, it's really, I feel like slimy saying it like this because BizOp is a sad place. It can be sad. I, know I don't. It's not. I don't think it's sad. No, at it's all. not. I came up in the biz op space, but what I'm saying it's yeah. like the fact that it's all based around making people feel pain to make them take action. Well, dude, I that, that's fine because it, like psychologically, um, people take action when they have a threshold when they cross a threshold, right? Yeah. I call and, it a mirror moment. Uh, yeah, and like, look, you you know that you you have a good pro or if you have a good product, you know it can help people. Sometimes doobie. doing the best thing, like get them, you know, to really let's bring out the true reality of their situation and get them to really objectively look at their life or their situation that they're in oh, yeah. and and get them to that point where they can cross that threshold to make a decision. Right. No, I agree. Or at least and in this case, when it's a webinar registration, it, it's literally like getting them to the point where they're um, able to see an opportunity. Right. Because like. You're not making them buy anything or anything. You're like literally being like, just come here and let us show you the opportunity that can help get you out of that pain. Yeah. You know, and if you can, if you have to make them clearly see that pain, that's enough to get them to see the, the opportunity. Then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's that's the best. I mean, dude, my life has changed because of courses. Oh, and yeah. if and if I know the, you tell me all the time, you're like that one. Well, it's time worth I repeating. Alex Becker's course. It, it's worth. Repeating. I learned how to use improvedly, and it changed my life. And if and if uh, these marketers like Becker would be like, yeah, I don't know if I want to drive the pain as much as yeah. I, you know, maybe I'll just tell them it's, it's a cool course. You can check it out if you want. No, no, no. no. I <laughs> agree with that sentiment entirely. Like, I, look, I'm not shy away from pushing people. Yeah. It was just a, a random thought I had. Yeah, yeah. But we should probably keep powering through just because we're, yeah. we're limited on time. So, so we talked about the oh, hook. Yeah, the hook. So let's yep. get into the rest of it. So what we covered so far was subject line, start off with the hook. And the, then really the early on, you really want to, I, I try to do it as quickly as possible. Just get that, letting people know what is actually going on. Give them the entire context, right? Okay. I like to jump straight into, okay, cool. So if you do want to learn more about how you can solve that issue, which is the, the hook, right? Then we're hosting a live call this date, this time. Make sure you're 20 minutes early because we only have 500 spots available. And something that I talked about on call, which I think is on our call, which I think was pretty fun, is whenever you tell people that you have X amount of spots available, it's really good to tell them why. Because we've yeah. reached a point in time where people don't fall for marketing gimmicks and stuff. So when I say we have 500 spots available, it actually is true because I, I am cheap. Like <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what you say. Literally, like that's why. And then... The emails are coming from Matt's persona or Matt yeah. Schmidt, not persona, but they're coming from Matt Schmidt. It's actually coming from our writer over there. Hey, but uh, <laughs> so what I told them to do is when they say there's only 500 spots available, make it like an inside joke. So write uh, that we only have 500 spots available because Devin's a cheap ass, and no matter how much I bother him, I can't get him to increase the room size. And right there is. The, one of the best things you can do with your audience right now is really build rapport, you know, build that connection because it's a hypersaturated markets. And the only way to really stand out is to have rapport. You, you can do fine without it. Like you can make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but I'm talking like if you want to be making millions of dollars, you really want to, at least the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is having a smaller community, but you have good rapport with them. And it's not to say you can't grow it, but what I am saying is a lot of people think you need thousands of customers to have a million dollar year business, which is not true. You can do it with hundreds of customers, like 300 customers could easily be a multi-million dollar year business if you build rapport with them and you get them results, right? So by saying things like, I know you want to talk, I'm almost done. By saying things like the, uh, just that little inside joke, it does build that rapport because then people get 
on they they feel like they're in on something. They're in on the joke. Like man, Devin, he's a fucking cheap ass, right? And then Matt, when he starts the webinar, he can even bring up that inside joke, and I can guarantee you, people on the webinar will be like, ha ha, yeah, Devin is a cheap son of a bitch. They wouldn't actually say it that way, but you get what I'm saying. So this rapport thing, yeah, I, was, I, I wanted to ask, like, how do you actually build rapport? And what you're saying, I There's think. There's a ton, ton of ways to do it, but yeah. th th that's one. I mean, it's really just being transparent. It's being um, having values that you stand for and having values as a brand and as a person. And I think, well, like, one thing that this really fucked me up in business, but I, I used to be business partners with Alex Becker. Mm -hmm. And he would always tell me, and he doesn't do this at all anymore, but back in the day, he did tell me to do it. So I guess he learned from this lesson too. It was like, just, just stay out of it, essentially. Like, if you have an opinion on something or if you have your own values or anything, he's like, who fucking cares? This is just business. Like, don't say it. Don't be outspoken. Yeah. Like, don't even necessarily like, be yourself. Just fucking, you know, whatever, right? And if you look at him now, for instance, he's vastly different from that. He's gone away from it totally. So that's always how I thought business was done because I had this ultra successful business partner and he was yeah. always someone I looked up to. So I listened. And then now I realize like, dude, that's not it. That is that you can't build a super loyal, passionate following unless you are not afraid to share who you really are and what really drives you and what your interests are and what your values are and stuff like that. Yeah. So being upfront about those things, that's how you really build that crowd of people who love you and while also building the crowd of people who hate you, which is like the old saying. Um, oh, I can't remember what the saying is, you know, but like when you know you're repelling people and attracting people, you're doing the right thing or whatever. Yeah. Good marketing should repel 50% of people and hyper attract the other 50% of people. Yeah. So, so that, that beginning of the email, if you can, you have a strong hook, but also include, I don't know, maybe like personal things or so that people see that it's like a true person. Yeah. The true. The true you either telling a sto true story from your life or sharing an inside joke or anything kind of original that you can, that's going to add some rapport. Yeah. Um, and, okay. And just something that we do with stuff like that. And we were doing it like a little wrong before. And that's, this is another thing that we addressed on that marketing call, which was it, it is good to include those personal stories, but you need to hook people first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people care about themselves, not yeah. about it. If you start so, this long fucking story, no one gives a shit. But if you have a great hook about your personal yeah. story and how that ties into what's coming, then I think that's when you actually hook people. Yeah, so, and, and just uh, an example of how it can be done out of order. Sorry to put you on blast. No, I feel bad. <laughs> Tell them I wrote the shitty emails. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so for one of our registration emails, it just was like, hey, first name, I just got back from Mexico with my 10-year anniversary with my wife. And I had a picture of Matt and his wife. And then it got into the the hook from there. And he was like, oh, while I was there, I met with Steven and he told me about this. And I knew I, I couldn't wait to get back to share with you. Yeah. But instead, if we just reframe it and it was like, hey, I just found out the most amazing thing uh, from Steven about how you can do this on Amazon, right? Where yeah. you find a good way to hook it. And um, but at the time I was down with Mexico with my wife and I hate to say this, but the whole time I was down there in Mexico, I just couldn't stop thinking about how amazing it would be to share this with you and how impactful it would be. Yeah. Here's a picture of my wife and I in Mexico, but back to what's important to you. And then you share the picture and then, you know, like you're building that rapport, kind of sharing the story, making them feel like you're excited about them. It's, it's, there's things called like parasocial relationships that are really interesting where people feel like you're talking to them directly. And if you could kind of do that with it, it's, it's hard. I haven't quite mastered it yet. I'm still new to the idea of parasocial relationships, but it's like why influencers, uh, fans are such raving fans because they feel like they actually have an Im a relationship with the influencer. And I think mastering that as like a biz op guru type thing would be really, really interesting and really powerful. Yeah, if, they, if they know the stories about your life, I feel like that that's part exactly. of it. Yeah. Your, your life should be like a TV show, a movie, yeah. and they feel like they're watching it. And, or maybe and they could like tell their friends the story that you just told them or something. Yeah. You know? And that, that's like a whole other I, I think the angle in the beginning, like if you're going to tell a story like that, the, the angle the angle's got to be interwoven to the story. So, for example, I think that, you know, uh, if you're going to talk about the Mexico vacation, that might be a good freedom angle. You know, you could be oh like, yeah. hey, here's one. I want to tell you this quick story. I was just on a, uh, uh, I just got, or I was on a 
vacation in Mexico and I was sitting there and one is one of the coolest things because, you know, just a few years ago, I would, would not have been able to take this vacation, but I, I was there and I was literally on the beach and just seeing the sails roll in. How is this possible? Well, it's because a year ago or two, a couple years ago, I started doing this thing yep. and it, it, it allowed me to build a business where I can literally sit on the beach and have sales come in. Yeah. And I want to show you exactly how you can do the same. So neck in, in one year, you can be here with me or something like that. Right. Or if it's away from pain angle, you can talk about how like bad how it was it. back in the day. Yeah, you you know, do vacation. Yeah. And you had to, uh, Maybe, your boss would be gone for two weeks at a time on his vacation. Or you, you plan to have a vacation and the team. last day your boss came in and said, you can't go because or you were denied the PTO or something Dude, like that. I had that, that happen to me. Like yeah. I had one job ever, right? Working at Jimmy John's and I had already left on the vacation. And then they called me while I was on vacation. Yeah. They're like, you need to come in. And I was like, no, Absolutely this not. guy's yeah. covering for me. They're like, well, he can't. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not in the area. And then they fired me. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I think, yeah, no, I think that's great. And you can be, you can, there's so story. many cool stories you could tell yeah, that, that talk about, that are related to that angle, you know? At, at the same time, you have to walk. See, this is where people need to tread the line and actually be genuine with it. Because it's really yeah. easy to sound like disingenuous or disingenuous when you're saying an email like that, right? Like, yeah. Don't you wish you could also be on the beach and be free, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you really – it's that – those kinds of emails are, can be – they can be tough. Well, I yeah, mean – We're just yeah. like all over the board. Guys, this is just – No, this is great. This is – I love, I love just having com session. Converse conversations, you know what I mean? No, nah, I know. Um, okay, so yeah, we're, we're – I think we've covered the angle. So what goes after the angle? Let's, okay. let's finish off this so, email. Well, let's go. <laughs> we got um, the – what's it called? Okay, so we have subject line, right? We have the hook right at the beginning. Yep. Then we tie the hook into the registration uh, date and time. And you're gonna have that scarcity. first that first link basically yep. Yep. after. I don't know exactly. You could probably a little bit get of scarcity. No, I think you should put the link right there. I am okay. such a huge fan of having the link just right there, right at the top. No more explanation. There's scarcity. Boom. Here's the link. Let's go. Okay. Uh, after that. There's really two different ways you can go, depending on how much of the hook you revealed before the date and time. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can say, uh, after you drop the link, you can say, you can give them like a little bit of teaser, continue on with the idea of the email, which is the hook, you know, expand upon that a little bit. Yeah. And then from there, you simply say, by the way, here's everything else you'll be uncovering or learning, whatever, right? Like try to make it not boring. Like here's the marketing secrets you'll unlock yeah. or whatever. And then from there, you just go into bullet points. The formula for bullet points is so simple, so powerful. It's just like how to do X so you no longer have to worry about Y. Right? It's again, it's from, it's an away from type thing. How to create Facebook ads that multiply money so you never burn cash again, yeah. right? Like lower your bank. It's like, that was a stupid one, guys. Sorry, fuck, I'm so pathetic. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> So we have like our design tool, right? Like the DFY yeah. jewelry. So a bullet point would be like a simple software that does your designs on autopilot. So you never have to waste money on a designer or spend hours just trying to learn how to use Photoshop for a design to fail anyways. Do right? you think it's too much if you have like a bunch of, you know, like different uh, bullet points? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because uh, like you have the main angle of the email and you're trying to see if that is the angle that really hits them. Yeah. So how do you, do you use the same bullet points for every email that kind of talks about what's going on in the okay. webinar? Or do you kind of try to use them to go along with the same angle as the email? Yeah, I kind of use just like the same bullet points for every okay. one. And it's, it's mostly just for more information, like context on yeah. exactly what's happening. Everything should be like really exciting, right? It yeah. should all sound really good. Yeah. And I don't try to make it align with the um, idea of the email. I'm just trying to share like the sexiest points I can think of from the webinar. Yeah, I think that can make sense because if they read the first part of the email and if they like that, then they would click, right? And yeah. they, they would already be sold. And so in the next part of the email, you change it up and give them some different reasons as well. And then, then if they read that and one of those hits, then they might click the next link. Yes, and just a pro tip for anyone who uses bullet points, it's very important that your most powerful bullet is the first one and then your second most powerful bullet is the last one because okay, yeah, people do not typically read all the bullet points. They'll read the first one and they'll read the last one. Yeah. So Sick. just keep that in mind. Okay, That's then like an after, SOP. After bullet points, then what? 
Then you remind them to be there 15 minutes early. You give them scarcity again. You drop another join link or register link, and yep. then you're done. Do you do a PS? <sighs> I'm I'm a naughty boy, and I usually don't do PSs like right. personally. I know that PSs are really good and they're really powerful, but I'm like sometimes just lazy, you know. Dude, I'm, I'm a not, big fan. I uh, know, no, I everyone I talk to about email marketing, the PS is a great place. Like it's it's because uh, it, a lot of people what they'll do is they actually skip the whole email and they'll just go to PS. Exactly. I don't do that, but I yeah. know that a lot of people do do that. Uh, at least this is what I've read from marketing experts who probably know more than I do. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But I know that uh, there are PSs in our emails because I'm not really writing them anymore. Yeah. So they're definitely there. I'm just not writing them. Um, I think I, I would love for you to share what you, if you remember, what you said on the walk earlier, because oh, yeah. it's essentially the same email sequence, like the same layout that I have, except you word it a little bit better and you have like uh, an actual framework for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's not mine. I, I think I learned oh, it from, from Rob. Di I learned it from Digital Marketer, I okay. think, first, but then I saw Rob using it and I was like, okay. So Rob writes all these emails and he gets a lot of clicks. And I'm like, dude, how do you get so many clicks? And what I realized is that he always like links something. Okay, most people in their emails go, click here to register for the webinar, or something like very obvious, right? Yeah. If I click this link, it's, this, this, this is what's going to happen. But He's he, isn't he? Yeah, he always like links something like um, very curiosity-driven in the beginning of the email. So he'd be like, I just, came, I just came across this crazy strategy, dot, 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 and crazy strategy would be the thing that's linked, right? So he gets a lot of clicks from that. But um, you know, what I learned from digital marketers, like basically there's three, three links in an email or you can do an email that has three links. The first link will be curiosity driven. So you get anybody that's like just right off, off the rip. So you'll have that little intro and link something that it's not obvious that this is gonna be a webinar registration. Um, if, if they're curious about the angle, they'll click that. The next one is gonna be benefit driven. So usually goes after the bullet points. So uh, you have the curiosity one, and then the bullet points kind of show you more stuff, what kind of benefits you'll get by clicking this link. Okay, click the link, that's the second one. And then the third one is the scarcity driven. So this would be like in the PS. Yes. So you could be like, hey, this is like the, this webinar, is this, this is the only time I'm be gonna be showing you this and the last time we're doing it is on, on Wednesday. If you, don't, if you don't register now, you might not get in. So click this link. So you're hitting every part of it. You're hitting the curiosity, benefits, and scarcity. It's a way to get yeah. three links in any email. And I, I like it because it does remind me exactly of like the same one we're using. The curiosity, that's the hook at the top. Exactly, the benefits yeah. are the bullet points, yeah. right? And then the scarcity, well, we just put scarcity throughout. But, yeah, you know, I, I think it's, dude. It's uh, a, there, sim a sick, simple framework for every email, you know? And like, just to reiterate for everyone who's watching, all 72 of you, uh, just kidding. Our last one got like, oh, I think we're at like 400 views now. So that's sick, good. dude. Yeah. Uh, but funnily enough, they're all on YouTube. I checked the, um, what's it called? Anchor stats. And there was like seven. Yeah actual podcast we need people to listen to actual podcasts Guys, spotify apple podcast <laughs> it's amazing what <laughs> are you doing you can walk around your town get your 75 hard steps in you uh, know and yeah, listen baby. to some marketing um shit i had something to say and now i can't remember great oh yeah Mark just to remind you guys like we're talking about one specific kind of email which is registering for a webinar and that's kind of like the whole point i think we should make this a series by the way because you're gonna have to leave here soon so okay. we'll uh come back next week with part two and then maybe we'll even have a part three about, about yeah. uh email Copywriting. And we can also analyze what just happened on this recent webinar because by that time we'll have oh all yeah, the stats be done. from what actually happened. Because so, uh, I love theory, but I also like seeing what happens in the reality. Well, yeah. I, what we can say is like the whole reason we had that marketing meeting yesterday was because we were not pleased with the results thus far. Yeah. That was after like five days of promotion. We were like, we think it can be better. And then yeah. late we sent out like one updated email right like yeah. with the new format the fixed format right yeah. and overnight we doubled registrants Hang on. So what but wait there's an asterisk to that we also did sms you gotta remind oh, people true. about the sms yeah, yeah. roseand.com go sign up don't be a bitch the the i bet the text probably drove a lot of the registrants as well so we got look we're getting all kinds of great clients i can't name their names <laughs> but let's just say the text game is you're the is, one is missing out. Up. okay yeah. you're the one who's missing out right now if you want to make money from sms you need to go to roseand.com right now We'll even send you a free Boston Terrier plushie if you're the first one to sign up. And then you hit up <laughs> Intercom and you say, I want my Boston Terrier plushie. If you do that, I swear I will send you one. And I will send you a shirtless photo of myself. Wow, with there's my prizes on prizes. Yes. Wow. Okay. It's incredible. It's great. 
I'll send you an older shirtless photo of myself. I still had an eight pack too. You don't want to see the current version of me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so this is like, there's a million different ways to do it. And I, I hate to say that like our way is best, right? And this is the only way you should do it. But what I can say is, you know, I've been doing webinars for 10 years and yeah, about 10 years. And, and this is what has consistently worked best for me Love it. over the years. And um, I was trying to think about like something that Alex said, and he, this is because uh, we were talking about him and his angle for emails or for webinars was always really interesting. And it was, he, he had really good rapport. That's what people understand. Like once yeah. you have good rapport, that should be like every business's main goal is good rapport. Because if you have good rapport and your customers really like you, your copywriting can be the worst copywriting in the world and you'll still make a ton of money. So Alex's emails, they'd be like blockbuster or this dot, 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 question mark. And then he'd be like, look, I'm gonna share something with you tonight that's gonna make you a lot of money. So you have two choices. You can either watch Blockbuster or go get your fucking DVD from Redbox <laughs> or, and waste two hours of your life on that. Or yeah. you can spend two hours doing something that will actually change your life. Here's a sign up link, like, come on. And he's like, I wouldn't like even talk about what's in it or anything. You would just do that. But again, it's all like rapport driven. So yeah. um, just to, to show you, like there, there's- There's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, we would get like a thousand people on call from those. That's crazy. So, yeah. um, I mean, but back then I would get a thousand people on calls from doing emails the, the way that we discussed today too. So it's all anecdotal really. But, you know, this is what worked. I think it's good. Uh, I think it. we got to run. So we'll do, do our outro. Guys, if you haven't yet liked, commented, and subscribed on YouTube, He's you should say it. He's not going to say it. He, Clayton is done saying, what are you doing? I think he's gotten enough dirty looks because now we started bringing on podcast guests. And whenever we say it, they're all like, this is stupidest thing. <laughs> fuck, fuck. Did he just have a stroke? So make sure. But make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review. Spotify Podcasts. Yes, they offer reviews now. We have a five-star rating. So, you know, go leave another five-star review and subscribe. Uh, other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Go to rowdyboys.net to subscribe to our email list. I'm Devin Zander. Clayton Johnson. And we're the motherfucking Rowdy Boys. Yes, we haven't lost that. We'll see you guys next week.